In 1891, a baby boy named Mahmud Mukhtar came into the world with a cry at the home of the chief of Tunbara village in the central region of the Nile Delta in Egypt. Mukhtar has shown his particular sensitivity to materials and sculpture since childhood. The large amount of silt brought by the flood of the Nile River has become an inexhaustible creative material. From a very young age, he began to create figurines from the black silt of the Nile. When he was 12, he moved with his mother and his two sisters from the small village of the Delta to Cairo, a trendy international metropolis already had a certain scale of modern European architecture at that time. There he began his primary education, not only learning Arabic and French, but also developing a keen interest in Cairo's extraordinary modern and traditional architectures. Here I would like to briefly introduce the background information of that era for the audience. In 1798, Napoleon led an expedition to Egypt, the Allied Ottoman Empire and the British Army defeated the French Army, and the French Army surrendered and withdrew from Egypt in 1801. The Albanian military strongman Muhammad Ali, who had made great contributions to recovering Egyptian territory, was appointed by the Ottoman Sultan as the governor of Egypt. Although Egypt was still a territory of the Ottoman Empire in name, in fact, with the recovery of Egypt's military and economic strength, the Ottoman Sultan was forced to grant Muhammad Ali the privilege of hereditary governor of Egypt, thus the Muhammad Ali family ruling Egypt from 1805 to 1952 was known as the Muhammad Ali dynasty. After the Muhammad Ali family became the ruler of this land, they began to make every effort to build Egypt and vigorously promote the modernization of Egypt. Among them, Britain and France are the Western forces most involved in Egyptian affairs. In 1882, the United Kingdom took advantage of the huge foreign debt crisis caused by Egypt's construction of the Suez Canal and began to fully participate in the control of Egypt. From 1882 to 1956, it was called the British Occupation Period. With the outbreak of the First World War in 1914, the Muhammad Ali dynasty, which was under the command of the United Kingdom, declared war on the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire's nearly four-century rule over Egypt came to an end. From the end of the 19th century to the beginning of the 20th century, like most ancient monarchies in the world at that time, including Ottoman Turkey, China, and Japan, the Muhammad Ali dynasty in Egypt also set its sights on advanced Western civilization. The Westernization movement of learning and introducing advanced European technologies and products is in full swing in Egypt. This also includes products in the cultural field. The construction of modern European-style new urban districts cannot rely solely on European experts. The plan to select a group of outstanding talents from Egypt for professional training was put on the agenda, and it was this move that sowed the seeds for the birth of Egyptian modern art. In 1908, Prince Yusuf Kemal established the Egyptian Academy of Fine Arts in Cairo and hired Guillaume Laplanche, a famous 19th-century French sculptor, as the first director of the academy. This school is the earliest European-style art academy in the entire Middle East. And Mukhtar not only became the first student of the academy, but also one handed down teachings from the school director Guillaume Laplanche. There he took the traditional courses of the French Academy of Fine Arts and began to sculpt and create allegorical figures from Islamic history in the classic academic style. In 1912, Mukhtar graduated first in his class and received a scholarship funded by Prince Yusuf Kemal, becoming the first group of Egyptian students to be sent to the École Nationale Supérieure de Beaux-Arts in Paris for further study. He later studied at the studio of French sculptor Jules Félix Coutin as a visiting student. Since the studio's teaching method was based on the study and observation of ancient sculptures, he began to focus on ancient artistic elements relevant to his home country, rather than limited to the study of Greco-Roman works. He gradually embarked on a different artistic path from other students, and successfully created a modern Egyptian style that combines ancient Egyptian aesthetic elements with European sculpture techniques.